Hello, my name is Steve Gearhart, and this is the Unagi Observer. Thank you very much for stopping by and watching. This uh, week is, well, it's the beginning of October. You know what that means? It's a month-long celebration of Halloween. And in uh, lieu of what my theater is doing, we are actually opening this weekend um, a theatrical version of Dracula by Stephen Dietz. If you, it's selling pretty well, so if you want to see, if you're in Baltimore and you want to see a good Dracula show, um, give me a call at the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company and uh, I'll hook you up with a ticket. Anyway, so in that vein, no pun, no pun intended, sorry about that, that was not intentional, I swear to God. Really, I didn't mean that pun. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, so in light of the fact that my theater is doing Dracula, um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Japanese vampires. And so when I, I looked it up, uh, the first thing I wrote down in the Google search was, of course, Japanese Dracula. And the first thing I got was uh, Sumotu Miyazaki, who is an actual um, serial killer who... In the 80s, killed in between 1988 and 89, killed four little girls and kept their hands and drank their blood and yeah. So moving right along from that. So what surprised me was that there is no actual um, Japanese vampire per se. There isn't something that we find like the European. There's different types of vampires in Europe depending on which country you are, but they're generally the same, kind of some, a man who drinks blood, fangs, uh, controls rodents, people, things like that. Japanese don't really have anything like that, so when the idea of Dracula came to Japan, they kind of adopted it and gave it a sort of a foreign-born foreign yokai status, if you will. So what did the Japanese have that were just as, as close to... Um, vampires that, that the Western world has. Well, there's actually a small grouping of yokai. And of course, if you know, if you don't know what yokai are, yokai are sort of like lower level demons, ghosts, spirits that cause trouble. Sometimes that trouble can cause death. Sometimes it's just a nuisance. A lot of times it's just a nuisance. But anyway, that's kind of what a yokai is. So I found a small grouping of yokai that kind of sort of fit the bill of vampirism a little bit. And so that's what I'm going to uh, focus on today. So the first yokai that has a little bit of a vampire aspect to it um, is actually one of two that are very similar with a very distinct difference, just one distinct difference. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a uh, Rok Roku Rokubi. And the Roku Rokubi is basically a woman who during the day looks like a normal woman at night unbeknownst to her she usually doesn't know this is happening but her neck elongates and it kind of swivels around and you know is able to go around corners and things like that and find its victim usually someone who is an evildoer and they kiss uh, or try to kiss the the person and in kissing them charms them and then you know basically sucks their blood uh, through the mouth. So that's the Roku uh, Ro Rokubi. Now the next one is going to be a little bit different. So very similar to the Roku Rokubi is the the Nuikubi. Now the Nuikubi is, is different in one aspect only from the Roku Rokubi. And the Nuikubi is simply this. The head comes off the body, the body falls down inert, wherever it is, and the head sort of floats around and looks for its victim and bites their neck and or whatever part of the body and sucks their blood, drains them, and kills them, much like the Roko Rokubi, seeking out evildoers, that kind of thing. Now the interesting thing about the Nuki Kubai is that their weakness is, is that if the head does not come back to the body to reattach, they die. So the common thing for a Nuki Kubai to defeat it is just to hide the body. So that when dawn comes and the head's still floating around and can't find the body, it dies. Okay, this one is kind of a trickster vampire, if you will. It says, the picture noted, it's a woman's head on a snake body. It's called a Nuriona. 
And the Noriona usually reside in water, and you usually only see its its face, its head, which is usually a woman. Sometimes some Norianas have, have actual arms, and what they do is they pretend that they're drowning so that you want to help them, and, and you come to their aid, and then they, of course, uh, you know, they're snakes, so they come out of the water, grab your body, drag you down, drown you, and then eat you and suck your blood. So the next time you're trying to help a woman who you think is drowning, just make sure she's not in Uriona. Okay, the last one on this list is a male sort of yokai vampire, if you will. And it's they're pretty common in advertising, of all things. Japanese advertising, you see them everywhere. Particularly with sake for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why I think it has to do with the dip inside of its head that's supposed to hold water, so maybe that's something where they just pour the sake in. I don't know. Anyway, the kappa, uh, as they are known, are turtle-like humanoids that live, again, in water, like the Norionas. And what they do is they're, they're just pretty aggressive. There's no trickery involved. They, they see you, they try to grab you, they try to drown you and kill you. And the way that they get at your blood and eat your entrails is by sucking them out of your butt. Death by butt vampire. Not a pleasant way to go. Not at all. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit about uh, yokai vampires in Japan uh, and a little something about a serial killer, and uh, which was oddly disturbing because uh, apparently he was an otaku and an anime fan as well. Um, so like I said, if you're here in Baltimore over the next month, over October, and you want to see Dracula, come by the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. We're in downtown Baltimore. Pick up a ticket and uh, watch the show and enjoy it. It'll be great. Uh, just to let you know, because I am going to be in production with this uh, particular show, my schedule might be off a little bit, so things might come up a day later. So, so just keep watching, keep coming back, and you'll and you'll see something see something new. So hopefully, I'll be able to keep up with it, and not skip a day or two. Um, other than that, thank you so much for coming here and watching these videos. As you know, I love it that you guys do this. This is a a labor of love for me. I enjoy doing it. We're at, uh, I think, at 99 subscribers right now. So we're almost over 100. If we get that and we can keep it over 100 for a while, everyone gets a digital taco. Who doesn't want a digital taco? And um, yeah, so let's, let's, let's try and make it that happen. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, really do appreciate it. So if you like this video, uh, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to subscribe, and I hope you do, please hit the subscribe button. And just thank you. And my name is Steve Gearhart. This is the Unagi Observer. And uh, see you guys next week.